welcome to session two of My Little Geekery's um, Adventures in Altera. Uh, when we last left, um, our intrepid adventurer, uh, Lurea, uh, this ranger prince had gotten into a bit of trouble. Uh, he, 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 unfortunately, his, his entire mission was as a member of uh, the royal family of the of the elven court he was supposed to go to a uh, a ceremony at at a at a temple along the, the eastern coast of of the kingdom unfortunately he was not able to make it in time for the ceremony which he was meant to actually um, view uh, as, as as a member of the royal family uh, he, he got waylaid, he taken down by, um, some giant insects, and he, he, he feels simply awful for it. He was, he was saved by a local town lieutenant who saved them, and he spent a couple of nights in recuperating in a, uh, local inn, and before he continued upon his journey to the uh, Temple of First Light, uh, where he was supposed to see uh, an initiation ceremony of a new abbot at the temple. Unfortunately, that didn't really go off. He, he, sent, his, he sent his mother, uh, the queen of the kingdom of Solune, a, a letter telling her that what had happened and uh, during the during the, his ensuing adventures, he uh, he was waylaid for a bit, uh, so he was not actually able to go to to the temple in time. He did manage to to uh, secure a bit of passage by traveling um, with a caravan that had also been waylaid. Uh, some heavier rains uh, further along the road had actually uh, caused a bit of flooding, um, and the caravan itself was actually had actually meant to go to the temple as well, providing some supplies um, and objects and, and foods to be used during the feast that was going to be held at twilight that evening. Unfortunately, they had also got, uh, their, their passage had also gotten slowed down, so um, Lua was also able to join with them so that he could actually travel with the caravan uh, to to the actual temple. He did indeed apologize to the abbot and has spent some time at the Temple of the First Light, um, which which is called Premier Lumaire, which they actually, the elves find it rather funny. The fact that one of their most sacred temples in, in uh, the entire kingdom actually has a rhyming name is actually rather hilarious. They, it's, it's it's sort of an, an inside joke that the elves just think is is really really funny. Um, most people don't really get it, but elves just think that's hilarious. And uh, the temple is of course was built upon the easternmost uh, portion of land that looks out into the ocean, where the first rays of of the rising sun hit the land in which the elves dwell, which is why that temple was built there in the first place. Um, it is built upon um, a bit of a rocky shoal uh, with some cliffs that drop down into the ocean. Um, there is a small docking area for some ships, uh, but they they don't really have a, a good port scene. Um, most of most of whatever is that it whatever it is in that is brought in by ocean um, has to be brought up to the coastline in in uh, smaller rowboats which are then uh, brought up to the temple with a series of steps along the way. There are, some, there are also some uh, fishing boats and some fishermen that also provide seafood for, for the temple, uh, but it's, 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 nothing, it's nothing grand. Um, so that is where uh, Luero de Otom has been staying. Uh, they have graciously given him um, uh, some nice rooms, and they are really quite happy to be there. Uh, Luero spent some time uh, 
chatting, feasting with with some other noblemen and some other uh, fellows, uh, sort of getting to know some more people other than just the individuals that he is he is used to seeing um, within the the center of, of of his forest home, and he is meeting some other. Uh, humanoid individuals for the first time. He has seen humans, he has seen half-elves, he has seen some dwarves and halflings, but nothing as cosmopolitan as uh, in this in this rather large uh, meeting hall and celebration of, uh, of, of the Temple of First Light. So he has been getting used to that. Uh, during this time of his staying at the temple, uh, it has reached his ears that one of the noblemen that have come from uh, the southern human lands uh, has lost his dog, which is which is rather odd. I mean, there are in El elven lands tend to have a lot of free roaming animals, so nobody really has paid any attention to the fact that a a wire hair terrier has just sort of wandered off from his master. That happens a lot. A, a lot of a lot of animals are literally just allowed to just roam freely in elven lands. It's it's a thing with elves. They just they they realize that that animals do in fact have their own minds. They have their own ideas, and they just they just sort of let animals be. Um, not not to say that they just they don't say protect food stocks and such from from snakes and and rodents and other creatures that might actually and and insects and other creatures that might actually uh, ruin their food but they fully realize that there are just there are going to be mice there are going to be vermin and it helps to have cats and dogs and snakes along the way to to help control uh, such populations um, so they just kind of they just let animals just wander freely a lot uh, not to say that they don't keep cattle and horses and goats and sheep in pastures that are fenced off, but you will, as 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 normalcy in in the elven lands, animals do just kind of tend to wander. It's it's a thing. Nobody pays any attention to it. It's normal. So nobody noticed that uh, this this nobleman's uh, dog has just wandered off. Uh, <laughs> Um, let's see. Red, Reginald Biggs, uh, has, has lost her dog. Is, it is, the dog's name is Sir Howard. And he basically, he tells folks, if, you know what, the dog, the dog has a tendency to wander off. If you see him, let me know. I, I will gladly come and fetch him. It's, it's fine. But I... At this point, Luau is has become rather bored. He's he's gone on this this quest for adventure and just sort of coming to the to the temple and I mean, granted, sort of feasting and dancing and 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 singing, you know, at all hours of the day and night is all well and good, but it's he's sort of used to this. He wants he wanted to go out and get adventure. And now he thinks that it is actually a good time to sort of, you know, kind of poke around and see what he can find. I mean, finding a lost dog. That's, that's something, right? I mean, certainly. It's, he can find a lost dog. He is a ranger. He, he can find animals. It's, it's a thing that he does. So he has decided to uh, track down Sir Howard, the wire-haired terrier, and attempt to find him. Um... Rumors, rumors have come about that uh, because this is this is actually a rather old uh, worshiping location for the elven people. Uh, there have been there are a lot of old structures and a lot of caverns that uh, some elven folk had once used to live in and to worship in, and there are there are quite a few uh, cellars caves uh, particularly along the cliffs that were were once used 
that are no longer used. Uh, some, some people have taken to use them for storage, uh, particularly during the winter months because it's cool uh, and, and relatively dry, but uh, many just lay abandoned. Um, and it has come to Lua's ears that Sir Howard may actually be hiding out in one of these caves or, or trapped in one of these caves as the case might be. Uh, there, there are a couple of people who have said that they have spotted a dog running to and from one of the caves that are nearby. So uh, Lua decides to check it out. All righty. Hmm. We have we have a bit of a cave. Well, the, the the location in which the dog was last spotted um, is actually a, a fairly narrow cave entrance, which is which is pretty typical. Uh, it it makes sense um, as especially several thousand years ago uh, it, when you are a hunter gatherer society. You keep the entrances to your to your homes fairly small in case of much larger creatures attempting to attack you. So the entrance to this cave, old cave complex, is in fact rather small. Uh, let's take, let's roll perception here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, it's just, yeah. I'm just gonna have to get on my hands and knees and crawl in. It's fine. I it's. I, I, I see, with a two, I don't really see anything interesting or unusual, honestly. Uh, let's see. Heavy armor. If you are wearing heavy armor, you may get stuck in the entrance. I am not wearing heavy armor. I am wearing light armor, I think. Or am I wearing medium armor? Where is my armor? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I'm wearing medium armor. Oh, hello. Where is my? Where in the world is my armor? <laughs> armor class. Armor, armor class. Okay, that's fine. Um, armor, armor, armor. Where is? I'm pretty sure I'm actually wearing. I'm pretty sure I'm wearing um, my wooden curious I don't honestly I don't know why I don't know why my armor isn't written down here I initiative armor class oh heavens where is passive perception longbow longbow I don't have a longbow short bow short sword it doesn't Right on my front page, honestly, it should say what my armor is. Why doesn't it? I might have to actually write that into defenses just so that it'll it'll actually say what my armor is. I'm pretty sure I'm wearing a, a wooden curious, and that is medium armor. It's it's fine. All right. Uh, ooh, natural cave entrance. It's kind of moist and kind of funky, and well, we still. My dark vision is kicking in. I don't. I don't. At this point, I don't really need any natural. I don't really need any um, a natural light. So I'm just going to keep moving forward. We have some narrow. We have some narrow steps. I'm going to tread carefully because these these are these are everything's looking a little moist right now. Uh, there there was some heavy rain at one point. So let's see. Seventeen. Oh, well, now that's interesting. I get toward the end of the steps and I notice that there is a trip wire stretched across the bottom of the steps. It's, it's a cord that is tied to to, to a couple of rings on either side of the narrow corridor. I can easily disarm it. it it's, yeah. That's, that's just, what? What? There's, there's a dog. There, okay. The, the caves are supposed to be 
abandoned, and yet there's a tripwire across the... Okay, I'm... Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to draw my short swords. This is... This is rather... I'm remembering, I'm remembering the thief from earlier. The, the thief in the previous adventure uh, that I had to deal with. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that this might actually be another, another thiefy stronghold. I had heard that there were some thieves, um, scattered about the area. So this, there, there might be some thieves around to take advantage of the fact that there are quite a few, um, there are quite a few people coming to the temple, uh, and particularly of royal persuasion. And that means that there are going to be coin purses about so i'm definitely thinking there's a there there are thieves about so okay we are going to take things nice and slowly at this point um uh what is my stealth Ooh, i am proficient in stealth let's see what do you got oh i rolled a 17. Oh yes, 17 plus six, 17, oh yeah, yeah. I am, I am, I am a stealthy bugger. I am a stealthy bugger. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm gonna write that down just so that, just so that if I have to, if I have to actually roll for, for somebody hearing me, I will. I don't get the bonus because I'm in, not in a woodland setting, but that's still really, 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 really good. Okay. Um, hmm. I come to a T intersection and this little cavern system. Uh, do I turn or do I go straight? I'm going to roll even odd. Uh, continue straight. Straight will be e odd. Even. Okay, so I'm actually going to turn off to my right. There is, ooh, there's a bit of an open pit. It's filled with moss and it has a collection of water in it. But there is a fairly narrow um, walkway around the pit. So that is actually what I am going to do. I am going to kind of walk around Hmm. I'm going. I'm gonna make a perception check. Nope. Okay. I don't see it. I just kind of sidestep around the pit. Uh. Well, there's kind of a short room over here. I can easily see it. So I'm just gonna kind of wander over to a little alcove on the other side of the pit. And uh, there seems to be an old nest that was used by something. Let me see if I can actually figure out what animal used to live here. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Nature, nature. Oh, no, I haven't the slightest freaking idea. It does look like a fairly sizable animal. You once used this as, as, as sort of its its previous home, but it hasn't been here in a while, so it's really hard to tell. Uh, yeah, I I needed to, I actually needed a twenty to, in order to figure out how long, how long it, what had been there, because it's been it's been a quite a while. Um, okay, there there do, does seem to be some mushrooms growing within some of the old straw and leaves and hay that has since started to decompose. So let me see if I can actually determine I can't I don't know whether these mushrooms are edible or not. Nope. Nope. I haven't the slightest idea. So I am not going to pluck them. I don't know whether they are edible or not. So I'm just going to leave that be. Okay. So I am going to come out of the alcove and then move on to a much larger area that was once a major, but it was once a shrine 
um, thousands of years ago. It is now um, housing a carpet of moss. The moss is thick, it is spongy, and it is green. Let's see. Perception. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm just awful at this. Nope. Nope, I don't. I don't really see anything. I don't really see anything lurking in the dark shadows, but there is in fact a sizable altar that is sort of sitting in the middle. Let's see. On it seems to be a wooden box, which is very strange. Um, I'm guessing that maybe the box was actually, might be, might have been stolen by a thief. Uh, let's see. I'm going to open it up. It is empty. Okay. Uh, there is a bowl. Uh, the bowl is full of acorns. Okay. You know, I, I know that acorns are, sweet acorns are actually edible. You can crack them open, take the nuts out. And if you, if you cook them for a bit, then you, t you turn them into a, a bit of a paste and you mash it up and you can, you can cook them on, on flat stones that you've heated by the fire and you make some very tasty acorn cakes, particularly for the breakfast. Very, very good. Great traveling cakes. Um, and there is, a, there is a, also a figurine standing there. Hmm. Do I take it or don't I take it? You know, I'm just going to assume that it was actually stolen. So I'm going, I'm going to put my swords away. And I am going to pick up the figurine and I am going to stick it in my pack. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, well, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot else, so I am going to move on. Uh, well, the room sort of branches out a bit and has a couple of, of, it sort of drops down a few levels with some really wide steps, um, to another fairly large area. I'm gonna come in from the bottom, I think. Ooh, it is actually, there is, there's sort of an underground river that is flowing from west to east uh, that is, it's probably, it's probably an, an it's probably an aquifer uh, that's draining into the ocean. Um, and I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how deep it is. Um, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out one of my swords and sort of dunk it in the water to see how deep it is. Uh, hmm. I am not entirely certain how deep the water is. It doesn't, it doesn't actually say. Hmm. Although the, 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 they, there's an unusual blue moss hanging from the ceiling that actually is glowing with a faint bioluminescence. So I can see perfectly with, with my dark vision um, in this room. Um, it's really difficult to tell how deep the water is. It, it actually doesn't say, which is kind of, it's kind of sad, really. I just, I don't entirely know why it doesn't, it doesn't actually say. That's kind of weird. I'm going to say that it's, I'm actually going to say that it's uh, waist high, just because I don't see why it would actually be. 
I, it, it, I can't imagine it being particularly deep. Uh, just because there are there are drier locations here, I can't imagine that it would be particularly deep at all. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go waist deep for my character. Um, they are you know five foot six, five foot seven. I didn't really I didn't really get specific as to how tall Lua is. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of slide into the water and it is cold. Oh, it is cold. Oh, oh, it is so cold. It is, it is, it is underground. It is an underground water stream and it is dark and it is freezing. Oh, it is, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I am, I am definitely not going to, yeah, I am, I am definitely going to get out of this water as quickly as possible because it is going to just sort of suck up my my heat that is definitely yep uh huh to continue to continue south or head or to, to continue to follow it downstream or move upstream let's see uh upstream will be odd again even i'm going to follow it downstream okay so I am going to follow the water downstream a bit and I come across a natural gray stone column with some water grooves. Uh, the stream has worn it smoothly around the column for countless years. Uh, a thick piece of wood has actually been wedged on one side of the column and there is a turtle that is has found a home on on the on the log and i i i wonder if he somehow got washed in here along with that piece of wood because this water is awfully cold for a turtle oh let's hmm let's I am going to I am going to attempt to be friendly to this here turtle. It is a it is a snapping turtle. 17. Ooh. Yes. Okay. That is plus 1 for Oh, I really need to do something about my animal handling score. Oh, he actually He actually is quite okay. He's, yes. Actually, it says right on here that the turtle can be tamed and transported with minimal protest as long as, as long as he manages to keep his driftwood plank. Okay, so I am, you know what? I, I can't, I can't leave this poor turtle here. This turtle, I know I came looking for a dog, but this water is ice cold for a turtle. There's no way that I am just leaving this turtle in here. I, th this water is far, far too cold for a turtle. So I am, I am definitely taking this turtle with me. Although I am going, I'm going to be moving back upstream because the, the tunnel becomes way too small for me to, to travel in beyond the column anyway. So I am actually just going to pick up the driftwood plank um, which, although it was wedged between the wall and the column, it actually, apparently, if you actually just sort of maneuver it a bit, you can just pull it out with the, with the turtle. So I am, I am going to take this poor turtle and take him back to, uh, the previous area I was at because there was, there was really nothing there. And I'm going to set him down on some, on a mossy bank. Um, as I continue looking for this dog and kind of sort of command the turtle 
in a in a in a weird sort of way. Stay right here. <laughs> and then oh, and then I go back into the water, which is doesn't feel as cold now, but oh, it's 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 awful. So I am going to go back upstream for a bit. And I notice um, as I get to a large back to the larger pool um, that there is that there is actually some stonework uh, that has been done um, in another area of the cavern and with a with a bit of a finished floor. So I am definitely going to go back over there and check this out. OK, so I go, I, I head over to to this other smaller area with a finished floor and it definitely looks like a campsite uh it's rather dirty there's some half burned bits of wood um it's still a bit damp um there there was a campfire uh it it has burned itself out it was small but it is still a little bit warm so that means whoever set the fire uh, hasn't been, could, could have been gone for a while, but uh, definitely, definitely has, has been gone for, for a bit. Okay, there are, are a bunch of old rotting crates. Probably the woods in the crates is probably being used for the fire. So let's sort of check some things out. Oh, oh, there is tucked away there is are some items uh, we have we have a dagger we have a lantern with lamp oil we have a block and tackle we have 30 feet of rope we have a brace with some daggers we have a little copper case that I'm not which is which is a bit strange um, hmm uh, and inside of the case is a single white feather. It is a quill that is wrapped with delicate wire. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. I'm not quite sure what that is. We're sort of, we're going to pick that up and again gonna gonna stow some things into the backpack uh, yep yeah. definitely some items that have been stolen there's a couple of barrels uh, let's see let's see what we can do here Ooh. Let's see, let's see if I can spot. No, I do not spot. Okay. I'm just sort of poking around. Do, 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 not really finding much else in here. Um, I do notice that there is a door. There is a door along the west wall um, that looks to be in it looks to be in repaired condition, which is a little which is a little weird. But then again, if if this is actually a a lair being used by a thief. That wouldn't entirely surprise me that if if they have if they have a a door that they're using. Okay, um, draw my swords. And is the door locked? It is locked, but it is actually locked from this side, which I find a little strange. Okay, I'm going to make a perception check. Yep, yep, not a problem. I noticed that there is 
some muffled scraping coming from the other side of the door. So I unbar the door and pull it open. And an energetic brown and white wire terrier bounds out to meet me. He hops about and, and, and barks rather excitedly that he has been let out of the room. Okay. Well, I found the dog. Um, I find it rather strange that the dog himself is actually um, sort of been locked into a room. Maybe the dog actually, maybe, maybe the thief was actually just worried that the dog would give them away and locked them up in the room just in case. I, I don't, I'm not entirely certain why a thief wouldn't just kill the dog if they were actually worried about that, but perhaps they're an animal lover. I, I, it's entirely possible, honestly. Uh, let's see. Let's take another animal handling roll here. Do, 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 do. An 18. Oh, yes. I, I, I managed to, to, yes, good, good, good boy, good boy, uh, down boy, heel, heel, sit. Sir Howard sits. Good boy. I pat him on the head. Okay. Well, I've let the dog out. Let's see what's inside of the room. Uh, let's see. We act, we have a deteriorated old, old bed uh, with an old straw mattress that has since sort of fallen apart. We have some piles of dog poo. Yeah, that seems normal. Uh, let's see. Um, there are several trunks in the room, which is strange, but okay. Uh, hmm. I'm not going to be able, I'm not going to be able to carry a trunk out of, of, of this room. Heavens. Okay. Um, hmm. Do I investigate or don't I investigate? You know, the last time, the last time, um, I investigated, uh, some stolen art of some, the last time I, I investigated such things, I... I found myself into in, in some trouble. So, you know what? I'm not actually going to to deal with this. I I'm I've I've discovered a bunch of trunks that have there and they they are complete. Uh, there there are a lot of them are some of them are brand new, some of them are old. Some of them are covered in iron bands as as to be a literal a literal treasure tre chest. And I'm just kind of looking at it and going, yeah, these are, these are probably all stolen from, yeah, I am definitely, definitely not going to poke about in there. You know what I found, I have found, uh, I have found the dog. I have found Sir Howard. I shall take Sir Howard back to his master. I shall pick up my new friend Turtle along the way. And I will go back to the temple and I will will tell will tell the preceding um, paladins that happen to be about that I have dis I I have discovered a lair of a potential thief and there are stolen treasures about in it and I will actually show them some of the stolen treasures that I have found. And that is precisely what I am going to, that is precisely what I am going to do. I am, I am going to stop. I am going to turn around and I am just going to just head right back out of this place and head straight back for, to, to the, to the actual temple of, of first light. And I am going to, to tell them what I have found and and this is actually the perf. This was honestly, this was the perfect adventure for my character. It was literally an investigation adventure, and it was perfect. Um, this is called Quest of the Dungeon Terrier. It was written by Frank Dragon's Doom 
Volkler? 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 I'm sorry. I'm probably... It was published in 2019. I'm, I'm probably absolutely butchering that. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it was... I found it on Drive Through RPG for for uh, Pay What You Want. Um, this is actually a really good adventure uh, for for this type for a type of a character that I have. Uh, it's it's an investigative uh, it's an investigative ad, uh, adventure, and it was honestly it was perfect. I and what I am going to do is I'm going to go back to the temple. I am I am going to let the leadership know what I have found. They will send their own investigative and recovery team to the to the actual old site and they will discover that there is in fact a thief's lair and um i don't know let's give because i the thief was actually in there um and he was hiding from me let's see i don't know let's give a 25 percent chance that he's actually still there when when the paladins kind of swarm the place 62. No, he has fled. Uh, he's, he's basically grabbed his, he's, he's basically grabbed his little meager possessions that he had and run. Um, it's okay. There is, there is, there is actually some, some items inside one of the trunks were literally his items. And I'm going to say that that is actually what he took. Uh, he, he, it, it ha it's literally like his, his literal possessions, um, some of his own food and he is going to, he's going to grab that stuff and leave as quickly as possible. Uh, he actually managed to hide from me when I was poking about, um, he was hidden in one of the barrels. He somehow, I didn't look particularly closely. He, he, he was actually small enough to sort of duck down deep into one of the barrels and hide in shadows from me. I rolled an amazing roll for him. Uh, I rolled, I rolled like a 19 versus, I think, I think on my perception, I rolled like a six or something to try and see uh, where he was. So I, I definitely didn't see him. Thankfully, he wasn't the type of thief who would come out in shadows and just kill me when, as soon as my back was turned. Um, apparently, he's not that type of thief. Uh, he would rather just steal and run away, which quite frankly, is, is quite, it's what, it, what's what most thieves would do, honestly. Um, with the idea of getting caught, he just, he just grabbed his stuff and ran. Um, but yeah, so that, that was something. I am actually going to take, I am going to take, uh, I'm going to take the dog, Sir Howard, back to his owner. And, and say that it, and, and give him, and give him back the dog and say, here is your dog. Um, but interestingly enough, you know, um, you know, it, it actually, it actually says at the very beginning of this adventure that, you know, his owner isn't really keen on keeping the dog. And since I rolled um, a, a, an, an 18 on my animal handling to actually sort of get the dog to obey me, he's just gonna, it's like, you know what? You seem to actually be able to, to make the dog do what you want. So I'm, if you want the dog, keep the dog. I, I, you know, the dog has just been a pain, a pain. He's been wandering away. I can't actually, I cannot train this dog for anything. If you want the dog, keep the dog. So, okay, now I have, now I have a tortoise and I have a dog. Oh, by the way, the turtle, I, I wouldn't have noticed in the cave because it, it is still rather dark and there was only the bioluminescent the bioluminescent um, light from above, but uh, the the turtle that I got is it's it actually has the quality of gleaming. the The turtle itself has a jade shell, 
It, it actually had, it weirdly has, like, a, its shell, the shell itself seems to be made out of a green stone, which is very bizarre, and I'm, I just, like, it's, it's a small snap, it is a small snapping turtle, and it has a green shell, and he, he likes me, so I'm, I am now going to have to find it, that, the, the turtle in here is actually named, but I don't know why, what, what in the world you would, how you would, unless you actually had speak with animals, uh, which I do not. I'm, I do not have speak with animals. Uh, I don't sure how you would find out what the actual turtle was named by another being who very quietly lives in the cave. But if you don't actually disturb the other being inside the cave, they won't bother you. So I don't know that she is there. Um, there is, apparently there is also a sort of a water fae living inside the cave um, who, ha, who is, is growing oysters and has actually been cultivating the bioluminescent um, plants above. I, I don't know that. I just, I just think it's weird and strange and yeah, I'm, ju I'm just gonna let I'm just going to let the water fae live there happily as long as nobody's gonna bother her the, the paladins are only just gonna go there collect collect the items that were stolen by the thief and then come back out so yeah um again again a lot of these items nobody's really going to know who the owners are some of these items are very very old um, and have been sitting about um, basically as reclaimed treasures. And since I was the individual who found them um, and reported them stolen, some of it some of it will actually go to the church. I am entirely happy to do that. I am entirely happy to tithe ten percent um, or more, maybe more like twenty. I'm I'm royalty. I can, I'm, I'm a nobleman. I'm a nobleman. I will, I will tithe 20% of whatever the value is. Um, and there's, there's quite a lot of stuff here. Um, so I'm going to have to calculate all of that, but there is, there is quite a lot of stuff here. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, one of one of the tr one of the metal reinforced um, heavy trunk actually does have a dark trap on it that is going to have to be uh, dismantled. Um, but yeah, and so that is the end of that adventure. Um, I am going to have to calculate the XP. The XP, even as written in the um, in the beginning of of the adventure, um, you calculate the XP by the uh, silver piece value of stuff that you find. So, basically, basically, I I calculate my XP uh, based on stuff that I investigate and find. And the turtle alone is actually three hundred XP. So I am second level. Woo woo! I am no longer first level. Because my I didn't get enough experience points. I, w I was 100 experience points shy from the last adventure to actually reach level 2. But I am now definitely well into level 2 territory. Yay! Okay, so I, again, I'm going to sit and, and rest and relax and sort of wait for another adventure to come to me. Or, if nothing else... I can spend a bit more time at the at the temple of the first light, uh, and just travel back with other fellows back through the forest, on my way home, uh, and and relay and relay my adventures to my mother, the queen, who I'm sure is dying to know what her middle child has been up to. <laughs> Okay. Well, that certainly that certainly um, came out better than my last adventure, uh, where poor Blair was was taken down by some some sturges. But 
Yes, that was that was certainly that was certainly turned out for the better, and I'm very happy about that. I now have a dog. I I now have a dog. I'm very happy about that, and I now also have a special turtle <laughs> that I am taking home. Royal elves elves tend to have pets. They tend to actually keep a lot of animals. So me coming home with a a special a special snapping turtle is not going to be weird in the slightest. So I'm definitely I'm definitely going to bring um I'm definitely going to bring uh my my pupper home. Um and and uh ooh as he he actually can see invisible creatures within 10 feet. Oh, that's nice. So I'm definitely keeping Sir Howard and I need to find his his he's getting me renamed. I am not uh, maybe keeping maybe keeping him Sir is actually rather amusing. I might keep him as Sir, but a Howard is definitely not the name of a of a dog for for an elf. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to rename my pup. I'm going to have to name my turtle as well. That is something to think about in the in the interim. Uh, but that is my adventure. Thank you for listening, and hopefully the next episode of Adventures in Altera will go just as well as this one. <laughs> Yes, hopefully, hopefully, I, I might actually, I'm, I'm kind of sad that there isn't another um, adventure listed on drive through by this, by this author, because this was nice. I really liked this. It didn't really have a whole lot of descriptive text for what was going on. But I mean, it was fine. It, it was fine. Um, and honestly, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of having a sort of a, a roll your own dungeon for the next for the next time. So where I could just, I literally roll dice or pull out Scrabble letter tiles. And I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, depending on, depending on what kind of solo adventure modules I find, uh, versus, versus, uh, just sort of making my own random adventure table. So thanks for listening. Ta.